Okay, so we're going to look a little bit at um, percent problems and specifically how we can use ratios to solve them. Again, ratio is a compa comparison of two things. We can look right here. We've got an example of a ratio. We've got part over whole equals percent over 100. Um, so those are the things we're comparing. And we can use this to solve most ratio problems. We'll do this by identifying the part, the whole, and the percent, writing those values as that ratio, solving for the unknown value, um, and then we'll have our answer. So let's look at an example problem right here. So let's say you had the problem, what is 15% of 300? So that's the question you're being asked. We're going to look at that, identify the part, the whole, and the percent. So I'm going to write part, whole, and then percent. Okay, now if I have the part, the whole, and the percent, obviously 15% is the percent because it's got the percent symbol. So that's always going to be an easy one to fill in. That leaves you with no one number and think about, is that the part or the whole? Now you can think about what that kind of means. And if we think of this problem, we're saying, what is 15% of 300 of is our total amount that we are looking for. There's also a clue, that word of right there. Often you will see of blank. That will usually be a clue that whatever number is after that of is going to be the word, is going to be the whole. In this case, that is the, is absolutely true. So we're going to put 300 is our whole. And then our part, that's the thing that's unknown. So we're just going to put an X right there. So now we're going to put that into that ratio right here, part of our whole equals percent over 100. So we're going to put X over 300, because that's our part and our whole, equals our percent is 15, and 100 always goes down there on the bottom. Now it's a matter of solving the equation. Um, if you note, or we could think this is an equivalent fraction, equivalent ratio, we can see that this is getting divided by 3, so we think what number divided by 3 will be 15, or work backwards, multiply those. If we're not sure of that, though, we can do something called cross-multiplying. And there's another video that you can absolutely watch. I'll put a link in the description. It just tells you how to solve equations by doing this. So the loops just tell me what I'm multiplying. So if I wanted to do this out, I could say 100x equals 300 times 15. Multiply those, that'll give me 45 100 equals 100x. We have to now divide to isolate the variable, so we'll divide both sides by 100. That bar just means division. Since we're multiplying and divided by 100, those cancel out, leaving us with x. If we're dividing this, we can cross off a 0 and a 0, and a 0 and 0, leaving us with 45 over 1, so x equals 45. I'm going to put that back up here and think, 45, does that make sense? Is that 15% of 300? Now, 15% is a small amount of 345 definitely is a small amount of 300 that does seem reasonable okay and so that is our answer right there so just by using those three things and identifying them we can solve them let's do one more example let's say if we had the problem uh we'll say problem two if we had 21 is what percent of 70. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Identify the part, the whole, and the percent. So I'm going to put part, whole, and then percent. Now we do not see either of these having a percent symbol. So that is the unknown. That's the thing we're going to be looking for. So now I have to identify which is which. So if we have this, we see 21 is what percent of 70. Our clue of of 70 is definitely going to be true right here. This is our whole. There is also a clue sometimes next to the part, and that is the word is comes after that number. Uh, so if you see blank is, there's a decent chance that that might be the part. Now, this is not always going to be the case. The word is is used all the time. However, if you're looking at a percent problem and you see a number followed by the word is, there is a chance that that is the part. Also, usually the part is going to be smaller than the whole. Now that's not always the case. Your percent could be bigger than 100%. Um, but those are some clues for identifying what's what. So our part is 21. Our whole is 70. We're going to put those into the ratio. Part of our whole equals percent over 100. So I'm going to put 21 over 70 equals our percent is x. Our 100 is there. And now we just got to solve this. I'm going to solve this by cross multiplying again. That just reminds me of what I'm multiplying. So I would have 70x equals 21 times 100. Multiply those, I get 2100 equals 70x. Isolate the variable by dividing by 70 from both sides. Those cancel out. We can cross off 10, which means we're left with 210 divided by 7. 
So it goes in three times, and then, yeah, so it's gonna equal 30. So x would equal 30. So we can bring it back over here and write 30 next to that and put that percent symbol. And then we're gonna think, does that seem reasonable? Now 21 is about a third of 70, 30%. Um, that does seem reasonable, okay? So that can definitely work. So all you have to do to solve most of these part whole percent problems is really just throwing them in this ratio um, and solving for what's unknown. And this will help you to solve most percent problems. Good luck.